Good evening. Good evening. Good evening and Merry Christmas and welcome to First Universalist Church. My name is Sarah Witte. I serve as the president of our board of trustees and it is with joyful hope and peaceful love that I say you are welcome here and it is a gift to share this holy, mysterious night with you. Our service this evening will be musical and poetic and joyful and calming and, of course, candlelit. And on that note, everybody get a candle on your way in? Did they run out of candles? If you didn't, raise your hand and I'm sure we'll bring you a candle. And to our friends joining us on Zoom tonight, if you put a candle where you are, you're welcome to bring it in the air at this time. So you can light it later with us in the service. And welcome to you too. All of the lyrics for our carols this evening are written by an insert in your order of worship, so no need to search through the rules. For our friends in the sanctuary this evening, you will find an envelope on the pew cushion for this evening's offering, which will be shared with the main community foundations, Lewiston, Auburn area response fund for victims and families. This fund was created in response to the violence that took place in Lewiston this fall, and 100% of your contribution will support them as they grieve and heal. You can leave your offering right on your pew, and we'll collect them after the service. You can also drop them in the baskets on your way out. And folks at home, you can make your contribution by clicking on the link in your order of worship. Thank you so much for your generosity this Christmas evening as we offer support and care to our neighbors. Let's pause here, my friends, and take a breath as our service begins. If you've been running and planning right up to this moment, if you have burdens on your heart or your mind, so many things to remember, I invite you now to lay them down and take a breath. Come to this warm fire. Come to this community of hopeful friends, this place of safety and vision. Come this way just as you are. It's time to let go of lists and work and worries and just let Christmas come. Our music director, Sam Chandler, and our guest vocalist, Danielle Laverrier, will now lead us into this special service. Thank you for being here. Thank 
Good evening, everyone. Merry Christmas. How are you? Here we are. This is it. <laughs> Christmas Eve. We, we did it. Almost. <laughs> we'll see. It is so good to see you. I'm Reverend Hillary. I serve as the minister here. And I'm Gwen Matthews. I serve as our director of education and communications. And it is with hope and peace and joy and love that we say, whoever you are, wherever you're from, whomever you love, whatever it is you have done or did not get around to doing. Whether you are here with bells and ribbons and boughs of holly, or you are just not feeling it this year, whether you are pretty wound up right now or whether you are ready to wind down. Whether you were here just last week or you haven't been here in quite some time or are sitting in the sanctuary for the very first time. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. And we are so glad that you are here with us in the peace of this magical season. Our invocation this evening is adapted from words by UU minister, the Reverend Gretchen Haley. And friends, will you pause here and just take a breath with me? Come in to this moment. We gather at this dark evening hour, a time when most days we'd be pulling the covers up, preparing for rest, or checking the day's news, sighing, shaking our heads, or escaping into a late night monologue or the latest binge-worthy series. Instead, tonight we gather, unwilling to concede the day, offering ourselves instead to this possibility of something new taking shape. In an ancient story, we believe that it is not too late for love to break through, to rise above the noise of grief and fear, performance and posturing. We gather as a habit of hope to give ourselves this pause to slow down that we might practice paying attention together. There is room here for everyone seeking shelter. There is enough of this earth to share, enough love, enough shelter, enough life for us to keep risking joy. 
In the journey, we are all part of this good news. Come, friends, let us celebrate Christmas together. Welcome, everyone. Will you rise as you are able in body and spirit with us now and join in singing our opening carol, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Lyrics are in an insert in your order. If you don't have an order of service, it is number 253 in your gray hymnal. You may be seated. And I welcome our friend Gwen back up to light our chalice this evening. I will light candles this Christmas, candles of love to inspire all my living, candles that will burn all year long.
first reading this evening is by Bell Hooks. This is number two. In love, there are no closed doors. Each threshold an invitation to cross, take hold, take heart, and enter here at this point where truth was once denied. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph went to Bethlehem to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for Mary to deliver her child. She gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And there were, in the same country, shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And lo, an angel came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were sore afraid. But the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I am bringing you good tidings of great joy for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory, glory to the highest, and peace among all who dwell on earth. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the angels have made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed. Mary treasured all these words. And pondered them in her heart.
Will you rise again in body and the Christmas spirit, friends, and join in singing our second carol this evening, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. It's on your insert or, insert or it's number 244 in your hymnal. seated. Our third reading this evening comes from May Sarton. She writes, we are stretched to meet a new dimension of love, a more demanding range where despair and hope must intertwine. How will we grow to meet it? Intention here can neither move nor change the raw truth of things. Where do we go from here? Fear, 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 fear. Our world has never been more stark or more in peril. It's very lonely now in the dark, lonely and sterile. And yet, in the simple turn of a head, mercy lives. Every day now, we meet face to face. Every day now, devotion is the test. We are forging a new union. We are blessed. As closed hands open to each other, closed lives open to a strange tenderness. We are learning the hard way how to mother. Who says it's easy, but we have the power. I watch the faces deepen all around me. It is the time of change, the saving hour. The word is not fear, the word we live, but an old word suddenly made new as we learn it again, as we bring it alive. Love, 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 love. I welcome our choir to sing to us again about love.
Thank you, choir. Thank you, Sam. Oh, there is more love somewhere. Love, 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 love. Friends, this year, Christmas Eve, today, falls upon the fourth Sunday of Advent, the culmination of this holy season of waiting. Translated from Latin, Advent means arrival. And each Sunday in Advent holds a symbolism, marks an arrival. The first Sunday of Advent is the Sunday of hope. The second Sunday is the Sunday of peace. The third, joy. And this, the fourth, is the Sunday of, what do you think? Love. Love. Correct. Today marks the arrival of love. Can you feel it? Try. In the chapter of Luke that Anne, John, and Sarah read tonight, the nativity story, there is a short, one-syllable word that flashes by and always gives me a little jolt, a little zing every year when I hear it. It arrives at the conclusion, at the conclusion of the passage, where in the stable, Jesus has been born, the angels have made their frightening and fabulous cameo, the shepherds have hit the scene, and everyone is pretty jazzed up. I mean, it's been a pretty big night, don't you think? Here's that last stanza again. So the shepherds went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Did you catch it? That little word? Did you feel it? That little zing? Why, I ask, in that last line is the word but used instead of and. The shepherds made known what had been told to them, and all who heard were amazed. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. That little word, that conjunction, it does something. When we use, when we use but in a sentence, we generally do so as a way to hold contrasting ideas together. I love eggnog, but I always regret drinking it. <laughs> the nights are so long this year, but the sun is so bright. Fear, 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 but love, 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 love. In the nativity story, Mary is having a contrasting experience from everyone else. I mean, given the trajectory of the last nine months of her life, makes sense she might be having a few extra feelings right now. But that word but does not quite track in this story, which up to now has kind of just moved right along through all sorts of bizarre twists and turns but it's wonderful that it's there because it jolts us from just rolling along with it all and calls us, the readers, the listeners, to pause for a second and feel the deepening, the gravitas, the responsibility that comes with love. We are learning the hard way how to mother, May Sarton writes. Who says it's easy? but we have the power. To me, that little jolt of, the wor of a word is the work of Christmas. I mean, honestly, it's the work of life, right? To meet the call and welcome the arrival of love. And to pause 
for a minute. In the midst of the lights and the sweets and the carols and the presents, or the family dysfunction, the loneliness, the exhaustion, and say, whoa, I have the capacity to love. What's my responsibility here? Let me treasure this insight, ponder it in my heart. In our faith tradition this time of year, we often turn to the wisdom of Sophia Lyon Foz, a pioneering UU religious educator who reminds us that every night a child is born is a holy night. And when we treasure and ponder this line each year, I imagine you, like me, probably think first about babies and children your children, your grandchildren, the babies and children of those you love. And yeah, good. Think of children. Think always of children. And I want to remind you that you too were once a child, a baby born on a holy night just like everyone you know, everyone you meet, everyone here right now. The very person sitting next to you was once a child, once a baby born on a holy night. And what makes that night holy, you might be asking? The same thing that makes your life holy the presence and possibility of love that exists within you and all around you. Bell Hooks, a radical lover of radical love, who preached that love is not just a feeling, love is an action, writes, in an ideal world, we would all learn in childhood how to love ourselves. We would grow, being secure in our worth and value, spreading love wherever we went, letting our light shine. And, she continues, if we did not learn self-love in our youth, there is still hope. The light of love is always in us, she says, no matter how cold the flame. It is always present, waiting for the spark to ignite, waiting for the heart to awaken and call us back to the first memory of being the force inside a dark place, waiting to be born, waiting to see light. This Christmas, beloveds, let yourselves be jolted from your fear and your cynicism jolted from your routines and your resistance, jolted from your reluctance and unquestioning attachment to the way things are, jolted from your doubt about whether there is still hope. There is still hope. Are you kidding me? There is still hope. Look at this. Here we are. There is still hope. It takes work. It takes stretching yourselves, stretching ourselves to meet a new dimension of love. This Christmas, my friends, practice with your love. Practice having there be no closed doors to your love. Let your love be an action. Take hold, take heart. There's still hope. The word is not fear, the word we live, but an old word suddenly made new. Tonight, we learn it again as we bring it alive. Love, 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 love. Will you join me now in a short moment of quiet?
from this place of compassion now, this place where we have turned ourselves toward the arrival of love, will you join me, friends, in a short prayer of loving kindness? Expanding your vision, widening your circle, I invite you right now to take a breath and feel the life within you. Center yourselves in this place, in this moment, and feel the life around you. Expand your circle and feel the life that stretches far beyond these walls. All of these lives seeking compassion. All of these lives, beings who do not want to suffer. And as we stretch our love into this new dimension, I invite you to speak after me the words of a very simple prayer or ponder them quietly in your heart. Will you repeat after me? May we be happy. May we be healthy. May we live in safety. May we know peace. Let it be so, and amen. And now, we come to that very special time in our Christmas Eve service when we light candles and pass the light to one another all around our sanctuary. In a moment, I will invite you to rise as you are able, and as you do, Gwen and I will come to the end of each pew and pass a flame from our candles to yours for you to then pass carefully to the friends beside you. And as the light comes to you, and this is very important, I see you shuffling, looking for you. Listen to this one. <laughs> Tilt your unlit candle into the lit flame. And then hold your burning candle upright and steady for the next person to tilt their unlit candle next to your lit flame. As we pass the light, we will sing Silent Night together. The lyrics are in an insert in your order of service. And following the song, my friends, keep, please keep your candles lit for a candlelight meditation. Sam will play an instrumental verse of Silent Night to begin, and we will join in singing when the melody begins at the top again. And beloved friends on Zoom, please light a candle with us now if you're able, or hold a bright light in your mind's eye. Let's let our light shine beyond the walls of this sanctuary tonight. Ushers, if you would bring down the lights, and friends, will you rise in body and spirit as we pass the light of Christmas?
Friends, please be seated and keep your candles lit. Hold your candle low in your lap and look into the flame. Let everyone in your family come into your mind. Your parents, your partner, your children, your siblings, your animal friends, your best friends. As these loved ones come to mind, give a moment to each of them. Give thanks that they are or have been part of your life. These people who have helped you become the person you are now. Now picture a place you love, a place you once went or go all the time that makes you feel glad just to be there, makes you feel complete. Take a breath and imagine you are there. Looking into this light, give thanks that there are such places and offer a prayer that we will honor them and take care of them. Every year at this time, we remember the beings we loved who are not still with us in this life. A grandparent, a parent, a partner, a sibling, a close friend, an animal. For some of us here, a child. Take a moment now and remember each of these beloved beings, no matter how long they have been away from this life. Rest in your memories of them. Let your heart be full. Now bring to mind an intention you have for the coming year of your life. Something you'd really like to do. A way you'd like to live, an experience you want to have. You might have many intentions, but tonight, just pick one. Let the flame of your candle now symbolize that bright intention. And 
as this flame burns, let it stand for the love, the courage, the goodness you naturally possess that will enable you to meet this intention, to embody it. Now, as we see these lights that symbolize our goodness, I invite you to hold your candle high. Ah. These candles are your light, our light, shining in the world. Nothing can overcome it. Look around you. Look around you at the sheer bright beauty of it all. Take a breath here, and when you feel ready, bring your candle down in your lap again, and make a wish for the new year. And as you do, blow your candle. Ushers, will you bring up the lights? Merry Christmas, everyone. May the light of our candles and the light of our goodness shine out and on and into the new year. Will you rise and joyfully sing with me now our closing carol, Joy to the World. seated. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at this special service this evening. This is my my fourth year at First Universalist, and due to COVID, this is the first real Christmas Eve I've ever led here. So, hallelujah. It was a good one. It was a good one. Thanks, Gwen. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Dale and Joanna on tech. Thank you, ushers. Thanks, all. Shall we have one, one more prayer for the road? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right. Our benediction this evening, again, is a wise blessing from the Reverend Howard Thurman. And you might know these words, and if so, you are welcome to recite them along with us. The work of Christmas. When the song of the angels is stilled. When the star in the sky is gone. When the kings and princes are home. When the shepherds are back with their flock. The work of Christmas begins. To find the lost. To heal the broken. To feed the hungry. 
to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. Merry Christmas, loved ones. Merry Christmas. <laughs> may you move safely and joyfully from the sanctuary now, and may your days ahead be merry and bright. Merry Christmas.